All right, so for today, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on... <clears throat> we've got a template that we've been working on these previous days. And remember, there's the copy of mine in the network folder whenever you need it. We're not going to need it at the moment. So you don't have to set yourself up with Cordova just yet. Because the big idea for us using Cordova is that we can create an HTML5 project and then just fit it into Cordova, which is basically the www folder. So we're going to spend some time today and most likely next time also focusing on, remember back in month one, the HTML, the CSS, and the JavaScript. We can start to do that now to actually create the interface and the general concept of the app, and then we will put it into the WW folder, basically, and we've got an app. Well, we'll get to that eventually, but today uh, what we need to do is uh, prepare our, ourselves a little bit. So without getting into the coding first, we need to talk a little bit about, let's say you were on your own, and let's say you took these three classes, part one, two, three, and you have the knowledge, you have the puzzle pieces to create an app. There's still plenty more to learn, of course. But let's say you learn all of the puzzle pieces of this class, and it's up to you to decide, how can I put those puzzle pieces together to make an app that I want for my business, my company, my idea to make money off of an app, let's say. Or maybe I'm making a nonprofit kind of app. I want to make an app that helps people. So whatever your concept of what your app is, you have to take stock of what you've learned in the class and perhaps what you still need to learn. Because even with a three-month class, maybe even with a four-month class, there's still a lot to learn. And not everything that everyone wants to learn uh, is applicable to everyone else. <clears throat> so I keep talking about the Cordova documentation. And we're not going to read all of that page by page, but you should read what really matters to you in the documentation. And whatever is not there, I have to look up how to use Cordova to access Bluetooth. You know, you have to look that up to go to the next level. How do I save my data to an Amazon cloud? You know, we won't quite cover that either. I'll kind of lead us to it a bit, but if you need to learn that stuff, it's still your own, your own quest for knowledge to get to that part to some degree. So um, we're going to uh, work on a project together that I've been saying about this uh, continuing education sort of um, project. I'm going to take a couple notes here, and I'll put these in the network folder. But these will be our brainstorming ideas for our class project. You are able to work on your version of this, of course. But when you come to me and ask, how do I set this up so I scan a QR code and it saves to my Amazon account? We're not going to cover that in the class. That's a very specific use case scenario that you want that we're not going to be able to cover because not everyone else cares about that. So we're going to take some notes. I'm going to take some notes. This is app brainstorming. Because we may have all of this knowledge of all of the coding and we're raring to go. But often it's better to first, right, step one, plan your app. It seems so obvious, but it's very easy to forget that step. I just want to get to my text editor, start coding. But if I don't plan, uh, how does that saying go? If you, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So if you don't plan, you might not turn up right. So we're going to plan our app. Step two, functionality. Functionality of the app. Step three, software for the app. <coughs> Step four, coding. Notice how that part doesn't come until a little later. You have all of these preliminary steps. So we've been jumping directly to the coding this whole time. We want to learn the, the concepts of the coding and the right um, methods and classes and all of that to get it to do what we want, but we'll pause for a little bit and then we will do this planning. So our app, the unofficial San Diego Continuing Education app. I want to make an app for this college, the unofficial app for this college. 
tasks or purpose of the app. So we'll have purpose, we'll have tasks. What do we want it to do? Why does it exist? What is it for? I'm going to say uh, uh, display uh, institution info. So like about the college. I want to display information about the college. Uh, that'll be pretty straightforward. We can gather that information from the main website itself, a little copying and pasting from the main website. I want uh, user customization. In this case, I want the user to be able to uh, make it theirs. You know, to kind of, in a sense, log in that it's theirs, that it's that it's customized to their name and their unique, you know, person. I want it to uh, show driving directions to campus. Maybe before that, listing of classes and majors. Some information about the college itself, customization, a list of classes. In my pocket, I want to be able to have what are the latest classes? Uh, what are some majors? Um, sounds great. How do I get to campus? So we'll have driving directions. Um, what else we wanted to do is store a class. Did that run out already right there? Yeah. So we want to store a class, um, a personalized schedule. Classes that I wish to take, that I have taken, etc. So conceptually, these are the various purposes or tasks that I want for this app. How we actually put it together and code it and all of that is just coming on further steps. This, this is all part of step one, planning, and step two, functionality. My plan in general is it's going to be an educational app, an app for this institution. Maybe if on your own you're going to work on an app that stores fitness information. That's my idea. I want to make an exercise app. Okay, what are the tasks and purposes for that? I want to store a user's profile, their age, their weight. Um, I wanted to display health levels, BMI, and whatever, and I want the user to be able to do exercises and log that, store it. Yes? Um, an example, like when we created an account, what sort of the structure that there's lots of information you store, and then how can you exactly that? Our version, to start off with, we are going to store information in the app itself, and then the next level of that would be to store it in some sort of cloud infrastructure. So Microsoft Azure, Amazon Web Services, Google's cloud platform, you know, they've all got some server, basically. We need some sort of server to store the information and then to retrieve it. And honestly, that part of it is pretty complex because we need to deal with security, we need to deal with logging in, retrieving information, all of that stuff. So that's why we're going to start off with first saving that information in a database within our own app. And eventually we would migrate it, and the way we're going to learn this is we will be able to migrate our local data to a server eventually. And oftentimes the server infrastructure is not free. You have to pay monthly, yearly, whatever. You have to pay per megabyte. Depends. But you will show us how to do that as well? To a certain point. Like I said, we're definitely doing the, the local database in the app, and we're going to be leading towards uh, resources on how to do it on a, on an, on a real server. Uh, we'll see how our time goes, depending on everything that we need to still cover, to see how far we get to that. Mm -hmm. So, 
for this app that we will be working on together, and then for your own version. Uh, you, you, you need to decide at a certain point what you want to do for your app. Um, ultimately, really, it's this class, I designed it to be very open-ended. If you're following <coughs> along with what we're doing in class, you're going to get a great result but it's going to be similar to what other people do. If you'd like to do your own version of things, your own great idea, great. Just remember to keep uh, within, we have you know one and a half more months of this class, and sometimes people develop an idea that takes a long time. Think of an idea that takes a long time to develop. Then the class is over, and you're not in the class anymore, and, and you're not here for me to help you one-on-one. -on -one. So think about that also in terms of the amount of time that you have to work. The software for this app, I'll say S1, S2, S3. The software is going to be HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript, also jQuery. and jQuery Mobile. Well, that's all web technologies. What else have we learned in the class? It starts with a co and ends in Dorva. Co Cordova, yes. So we're also going to work with Cordova. So common web languages plus Cordova equals a real app. Um, Cordova, which relates to platform SDKs. The actual software development kits, the actual code of Android, the code of Apple, the code of Windows. And in this class, in this room, we're set up with the Android code. If you're uh, on your own developing then for iOS, as I've said, you need a Mac, you need uh, Xcode, you need all of that. If you're developing Windows apps, well, you need Cordova, but then you need uh, Visual Studio and its SDK and such. And that's just hanging around in the background once it's all properly set up, and a lot of us have had some trouble. But once those SDKs are set up, then it's all about Cordova. Cordova build. <coughs> Cordova build Android. Cordova build iOS. But setting up this basic platform takes some of that effort. In the actual coding, in our case, is just Notepad plus plus again. So this is an overview, general idea of our main class project. Then you can, on your own, think about. Uh, what kind of personal project you want to do, which is optional. Ideally, and the way I've taught it for the last four years, everyone's developing the, the same kind of general app together, and then <coughs> during the last few weeks is when people start to deviate and do their own thing, and then by the end of the class, I have people upload a real app to a real app store. We've seen them. If we go over to Amazon, we see, we search for my SDCE, and... Um, People, people's uh, apps are official there on Amazon for you to download for real. Uh, we'll, we'll cover Amazon App Store, uh, Android App Store, um, iTunes App Store, etc. So ideally, by the end of the course next month, uh, I would like people, by the end of the course, to have uploaded something to the real app stores so then I can show future classes. You've seen the results of previous classmates, previous years. Part of what this early step also is, so an early planning step, wireframing. thumbnailing. Um, simple sketches of key components 
of your hand. You can also think about it sort of as a flowchart. Not a flowchart, a schematic. Not a flowchart, I guess, but schematic. Uh, I'll do this in, in, in just a moment. Um, on paper, digitally, on a napkin, so many famous modern tech companies have been born on the back of a napkin. We can go look up in the official Twitter story. Uh, they, they have a picture of the original idea of Twitter that was written on a napkin, which of course has a coffee stain on it, because they were drinking coffee and thinking about the next, um, the next great project. So some basic ideas written down on paper as thumbnail sketches. That's another part of this whole brainstorming aspect and planning. So what I'm going to do is, together in a moment, we will do two, two kinds of wire framing. We'll do um, app navigation wireframe. And we will also do interface um, schematics. When we get to the coding part, we need to then bring to life what we had originally set up here. So I'm going to use plain old Microsoft Paint to draw some quick designs here. And I'll put this in the network folder if you want it. You can do this if you want. Uh, this will be my... Um, my navigation wireframe, and then my interface schematic. <clears throat> All right, so we have a cool digital pen here. So the idea is that we're going to um, have a, a starting screen index. We're going to have our very first starting screen, the first screen that the user sees, which is going to link to a few other screens. Actually, what is the very first screen, perhaps, the very first thing we see in our app? Splash screen, that launcher screen splash screen. So I'll say splash. We're going to have that first. So you see, simply, obviously, I knew that we were missing the splash screen, but I'm saying it in that way about here's the brainstorming. What if this was an idea? We're making our app. It's better to think of these things on paper, on a chalkboard, on a whiteboard, on, on, uh, on, on those uh, little sticky notes first, then getting into the code, getting deep into it, setting yourself up, writing the code, and whoops, we have a big thing we need to change back. Step zero. So we have a splash screen here first that we see, which then takes us after some amount of time to the index. I'm going to put a little clock here. Does that look like a clock? <laughs> All right, that's kind of our clock. I don't know, maybe it looks like a strawberry or something. It's supposed to be a clock, meaning at, after a certain amount of time, the splash screen goes away and then starts. I say that because sometimes people design interfaces, or design apps, that is, that you see kind of a welcome screen that you have to click to proceed, like to agree to terms of service or something. So in my case here, I'm trying to delineate that after some amount of time, the splash screen goes away, 
as opposed to I might design you know a finger and a button in my schematic here to show uh, well someone should do some user interaction to get away from the splash screen. From the index screen we can display um, we can go to an about screen. Again, I want to display some institutional information, as I have in this document over here. I want to uh, have um, institution info about the college, listing of classes and majors. I have to decide, am I going to have one overarching screen to have all of the possible classes, or am I going to divide them up into different screens? So if I uh, plan it at this point, let's say for our particular app, so that we're all on the same pace and kind of on the same page and keeping it attainable, I'm going to have, just to start off with, I'm going to have an art classes screen and a computer classes screen. Obviously we teach many more of these kinds of classes and to start off with I want to do this that from the home screen I can go look at art classes and computer classes. As I kind of figure things out more or change my plan and such I then further refine this. From the art screen I'm gonna want to have some other content here sidebar in the art screen I'm gonna have a sidebar that I'm gonna swipe in to show some kind of information my idea is I want to have a calendar here it's supposed to be a calendar so I, I'm going to have a, a listing, uh, a sidebar that I can swipe in from the edge that will show me a calendar of the latest art, um, the latest art events that we might be having. And then also a list of classes, actual classes or majors. Listing my classes here, so I haven't figured out how I want this to look just yet, that's next. The ideas here are what do I want my app to show, what do I want it to do. On the computer screen, maybe also I'm thinking of ideas. I want to display video here. For computer classes, it's often better to have some sort of video instruction, perhaps. So maybe I can have previews here of some of the class uh, materials as video as well as the class listing as I'm setting this up I can also think about I'm going to be able to navigate between these different screens um, I, at this point I can figure out how can I navigate between the screens. Notice from the spla splash screen I have an arrow here that only goes in one direction from the splash screen to the index. I can't go back. I can't ever go back to the splash screen really. I don't need to. From this point I can set this up that I have the ability to travel back and forth between all of these screens as I wish and back and forth from these screens. This one's superfluous and it kind of clutters it up, but you get the idea. I'm not going to put that one. But you're getting the idea here that uh, I can go from here to here. I don't have to go back to the index before going to computers. I can go between any of these. There are some screens, however, that I can only get to from a parent screen. So even something basic like this I want to define. From what screen can I get to what other screen?
eventually we're going to have another screen about um, how did we call it over here? We called it the personalized schedule. I'm setting up here that I really only want to get to it from the index, maybe, or I can decide that I can get to this screen from other screens, maybe. About information. This is the customization that I had specified over here. Uh, so, you know, user customization. And from here I also want a map. I want the driving directions. I want to tell people how to get to the physical location. So from here I can find it, the map, from any other screen. No, but I could. And I'll have arrows everywhere. Here I'm kind of breaking down my big idea. This is app wireframe. My SDCE. I'm going to be. Uh, I'm going to be cool. I'm, we're going to name our app my SDCE with some creative spelling or creative custom, uh, creative capitalization. This is an important step to kind of plan things before we get into the coding aspect. Right now, we're taking just a couple minutes on it because I already know what we're going to do. We already have a plan. But if it was our, if it was your own app, you might take a little longer. You know, an hour, two hours, a week. I don't know. Maybe if it's yourself and other people that you're working with, it probably often takes longer because when you give someone the chance to give their opinion, they're going to give their opinion, and then everyone's going to have an opinion. What should this app do? People are going to start to talk about well. I hope you have some, you know, cool green and blue colors. That's not the point to talk about that yet. I'm talking about what does it do, not what does it look like. That's later. So if you have a lot of people working on a project, that is how things get bogged down. Everyone has a valid opinion, of course, but perhaps at different points in the process is when it's most valid. Here's our general wireframe. Any, any questions, comments at this point about the idea of the project? Ideally, this is connecting to the online server where, yes, a person creates an account with some sort of name and email or some unique identifier and then that is tied into all of the classes that they're saving. Yeah. That's the, the ultimate level. To start off with, the person when they have their app, our app, installed on their device, it doesn't need that extra create a username and email and all that because it's on their device. So on their device we're going to store their personal schedule and then we'll see that later that can be transferred over to a server, which requires more of the uniqueness to say this person's schedule is on this person's device. So, as you can see, our app, you can add in an app and just add it installed in our own device. Yeah. Oh. It's, it's, very, it's very cool, it's very straightforward. We will be able to store any amount of information basically right on the user's device itself and retrieve it pretty easily. We get to the complexity and the difficulty and the security issues when we then have to interface with a server. Any other questions or comments? Computer classes. Video classes. Uh, I would like to blame my pen for the bad writing, but it's my own bad writing. <laughs> This is because we're so many of us are so used to digital writing that 
that real writing now is so alien. Classes. All right, so this is one aspect of the early um, of the early uh, process of the early planning related to functionality, but it worked better for me to kind of write it down. Part of the app navigation wireframe and next interface schematics. So it doesn't have to be perfect at all at this point, but this is when I start to kind of think about how should it kind of look. So I'm going to create another file and do a couple more drawings here. Again, I'm going to save this to the uh, network folder in a moment. I'm going to create a new file. And this one is going to be about our interfaces. I don't have to be an artist. I can draw boxes, kind of. What I want to do is, my idea is I'm going to have an interface divided up with some sort of header, some sort of footer, nav, buttons, some sort of heading text, some sort of paragraphs, I can figure that out later, pictures, maybe at this point I can start to think about columns and all of that, or maybe just in general, a general interface. This is interface A. We'll do interface 1. Interface 1. There's a kind of an interface that I want to create that's going to have a header, footer, nav, and content area. There's another kind of interface that I may create that only has a header, no footer, with content. And then maybe a back button. Interface 2. I'm thinking that maybe we can create some pop-ups. I'm drawing this one a little bit different. I'm also trying to draw a little shadow here. These are full screen interfaces. I, I didn't draw it the same size. I should have. This is the same size as that. The difference here is no footer, no nav bar, but it one simple back button. This one I did draw it smaller. I want, I'm thinking about that as a pop up. That's interface three. And my sidebar. Interface 4. All the details about um, all the details about colors and colors and alignment of, of uh, icons and all of that could be at this possible step as well. I could start to brainstorm some colors. Uh, I'm not going to do it just yet at this point, but you know I have some colors up here that I can play with and I can colorize some things up here to show it's going to have a red header and uh, red over here and all of that. I'm not going to deal with colors just yet at the moment. Not necessarily. It's not going to be that I go from one screen to the other in this order. I'm just thinking that some of the ways I want to display the information, some of the ways I want to display my screens could be either I1 or I2 or I3 or I4. So how should it look when I see a screen? 
isn't necessarily like something here Yes, definitely. I could easily share these. I could use Interface 1 in some of my screens, and I can use Interface 2 on some other ones. Let me kind of pull this one up here. So here, if we were looking at the interface wireframe this way, maybe I use Interface 1 for some of these big screens like this, Index, About Art, Computers, and then maybe I'm using some of the different kinds of interfaces for some of these different screens. If I'm going to design, you know, the user customization screen, maybe it'll be a simple pop-up, so I have an idea of what a pop-up should look like. Sidebars, classes, maybe it's interface 2. Maybe I don't need it to have the full nav bar. I just need a back button or some sort of simple navigation. So yes, we can reuse these interfaces as necessary. I'll write interface schematics. So this pre preliminary phase can be as detailed, as long as you want, as complex as you want. For us, because I already have a plan for the class, it's not going to take that long. But for your own app, it may take longer. I encourage it for you to take a while with it. To think about what are screens that I want to show in the general sense of it all general design, how do I want it to appear for your own project to, to think about. Any questions further on the on the interface portion? Yes? What is the pop-up going to be for? Like what kind of answer? That could be like information that pops up to give the user some feedback. Uh, we're going to use it um, when we go over to some of this about information, you know, this will pop up to show some, some information. It doesn't have to be full screen, just a little pop-up for some information. So these two, if you'd like a copy of them, I'm going to put them into the network folder. who the originator of that quote is, but something to think about, especially when you get to technology, coding, and all of that. We want to get into the code right away. We want to get into Cordova. We want to open up Notepad++. We want to put into practice what, we, what we've learned. We should plan. In addition to teaching a lot of these computer programming classes, at the moment I'm also teaching an animation class at Southwestern College. We're using Adobe Animate to create graphics and animation and all that fun stuff. And in there, it's also very important. I'm teaching them how to use uh, you know, a cool uh, digital pen. I'm teaching them how to color and paint and all of that. And then how to animate, make a character move, come to life. But if you don't plan, then you might not get the right result. There's an assignment for that class that I'm doing where they're going to develop a storyboard for an animation they're going to create, a script and such. Because learning how to animate is one thing, but making a good animation is another. You might know the tools, but do you have the concept? So we've got step one, we've got step two, we have uh, our idea of step three, it's pretty, we've got that set up, and then the coding part of it. 
is coming up next. So that's what we're about to get started on. Any final questions on this early steps?